Hello viewers, I'm Linda Reed, Superintendent of South Euclid Lyndhurst Schools. Today we are privileged to be doing something a bit different with our production. Rather than one guest, we have three special guests with us. They are some of our model students that we'd like to welcome into the studio. We have with us Brush High School seniors, Toy Williams. Hello. Brandon McGee. Greetings. And sophomore, Parker Shapiro. Hi. We would like you, the viewer, to learn about our schools from the students' perspective. So let's begin. To begin this show, I'd like you to tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, um, how long you've been a student in the district, and if anything about you'd like to say about your family. So, Tori, I'd like to start with you. Awesome. My name is Tori Williams again. I have been in the district my entire life, from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. I also have two older brothers, and I'm a triplet. They've all gone through the district, as well as my mom. She went through the district when she was a kid. So you talk about triplets, so you have uh, siblings in the senior class as well. Yes, ma'am. I have a brother and a sister. What are their names? Gabby and Jared. So it's going to be a vi very busy graduation for your family this year. Of course. Yeah. How exciting. I'd like to welcome Brandon McGee. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello. Thank you for having me once again. My name is Brandon McGee. I'm a senior here at Brush High School. I've been in the district for seven years. Um, I started it back at Greenview in the fifth grade. I've loved my time here at South Eagle Lyndhurst. And I'm the only student here from my family in the district. They're all much older than I, so. So you're the baby of the family. Right? I am the baby yeah. of the family. Well, welcome. Parker, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been in the district all my life. Um, went to Adrian for elementary school and went all the way up through there. And um, I'm also the youngest in my family. My sister's much older than I, but she also graduated from Brush. And a lot of my, uh, my mom's side of my family did also. So it's, it's a long line that's been here. Great, great tradition as well. Well, to, to start with, I'd like to talk a little bit about, we have, uh, about the courses that you've taken here at, at Brush High School. So if I can start off with Brandon, can you maybe talk about one or two courses that you've taken that really stand out uh, in your career here? Well, I've definitely had a really rigorous career, academic course load here at Brush High School. Um, especially my senior year. And when it comes to um, courses that really stick out in my mind, the two that come to mind are AP Government and AP Physics, which are both classes that I take this year. Um, the reason that I love AP Government is because I want to go into government or politics. And that class is taught by Ms. Cassidy, and I've had her two years in a row. And she's just an awesome teacher, and she's able to relate all the things back to us. If we don't understand, we can always freely ask questions. And so I love AP government because we do, first semester we covered the U.S. aspect of government, and then this semester we're diving into the comparative politics, which is really nice because, I mean, I want to be a politician and it's really good to know what's going inside of the U.S., but also outside of the world, outside in the world. So it's really nice to, I love that class. And then AP physics, that's the challenge of my day. It's just being able, the academic challenge, being able to go into a class and be given critical workload um, with the labs and the homework, everything. It's just, I love that class because Mr. Mike is a great teacher and... Sounds yeah. like a good challenge. Tori, tell us a little bit about some of the courses that you've enjoyed that, that stand out here at Brush. Well, I've really loved all the classes I've taken. Uh, I have two top academic courses as well as some other courses that aren't academic but extracurricular. Um, my favorite history class was AP U.S. History, taught by Mr. Harkey. He's a wonderful teacher, and he gave us information in a not-so-strict way. We, he was very adaptive with the way he taught us, and it was a great way to learn rather than just looking at a slide of notes, as well as a forensic science class that I took, which is a different science class than the normal science classes like biology and chemistry. It gave us a completely different outlook on a science that you may not even think of as a science. And then um, I also really enjoyed band and ceramics. You, uh, what what uh, instrument do you play in the band? I play alto saxophone. Oh, great. You know, you mentioned the elective uh, forensic science. That sounds uh, like a different and interesting course. What were some of the lessons that you learned in forensic science? We learned a lot about hair follicles and fibers that you would find at a crime scene, as well as blood splatter, fingerprints, um, what to do when you go into a crime scene, um, forging as far as handwriting and checks and money and a few other really interesting things. Sounds good. Parker, I know you're a sophomore, but can you tell us maybe about a course or two that stand out in your uh, education here? Um, yeah. Uh, one class that really stuck out to me for this year in particular, I mean all my classes have been pretty fantastic, but uh, one class that's really stuck out for me this year was uh, a class called Writing for Success. It's a class that's geared towards 
being able to write and fully express what you want to and do it correctly versus just writing down a bunch of bullet points and hope you got your hope hope you explained everything completely and um, it, it's also really geared towards helping you with college research and um, trying to help you advanced advance how you write for the future. You know, having put three children through college myself, I can tell you taking a course to write for success is important. Not only will you find that uh, very valuable in college, uh, in your in your future careers as well. So I'm glad to see that there we have an opportunity for that. Um, you've all mentioned some teachers in the coursework's that you've taken, and uh, so let's talk a little bit about the role the teachers have played for you. And I'm going to jump around a little bit to start with different people. So Tori, I want to start with you. What is the role? Uh, teachers here at Brush have, have done for you? The teachers are very supportive academically as well as uh, personal connection. There's al they're always here for us whether it's in the morning or after school if we want to talk individually. They're here if you miss a day and you want to find out what happened during class or if you need extra help on an assignment or on a general, a general lesson. Um, I know all of my teachers have been very helpful with me throughout the years as, um, as just academic courses elective courses and then my intervention specialist was the driving force that I have had. She was so helpful and supportive and is why I am the successful student that I am today. Right. Brandon, you've mentioned a couple of teachers, but I'm, I, mean, I mean, what role have, of, have your teachers played for you in, in your high school career? In my high school career, my teachers have played um, multiple roles, but the roles that stick out to me are the roles of motivator and supporter. Um, and that's not only talking about inside the classroom, but that's talking about outside and my other and my other ventures as well. Um, one thing that sticks out to me, especially, is when I won when I was a finalist for the Stop the Hate Award. A lot of the teachers from the English department came out to support me as well as an administrator. And sometimes it's just great to know that you have your South Dakota Lindhurst um, family supporting you as well as you know your parents and everything. It just gives a boost to know that, there's, they act, that your teachers actually care about you rather than just you know being a student in their classroom. So they take time beyond the school day to make sure that they uh, see an opportunity to, to uh, see your talents outside of the classroom as well. Exactly, and that means a lot to me. Great, great. Parker, um, a little bit about what role so far has the teachers played for you here at Brush High School? Going back to what these two said, they've, they've played a huge role. I mean, they, they'll help you any way they can going to extracurriculars, supporting your extracurriculars. For me, it's, it's mainly sports. Um, a lot of teachers here are also coaches, and you know, it it's, makes it easier for me to relate to them, and uh, it's, it makes it much easier for me to build a relationship so I can go to them, and ask them for help when need be, or things like that, and all teachers are willing to stay after school, stay before school, to help you out whenever you need it, and it really means a lot to all the students. Fantastic. You know, I'm going to ask you the next, next question. Sometimes we forget about our administrators. Um, so, you know, we talked about the role of the teacher. Really, what role uh, have the administrators here uh, played? And Brandon, I'm looking at you. Is there anything you'd like to share first about uh, the role of, of, of your administrator here at, at Brush High School? Well, all I can say, the administrators are amazing. Um, Mr. Harrington is the best principal I would say he's the best principal I've ever had. He's just so welcoming. In the morning, he greets you with a handshake, makes you feel welcome. It really is nice. It's like, it's like a, success, a handshake of success. It motivates you to have a great day. He's always telling us to have a great day or something motivational. He always is saying something positive. You know, sometimes you might come into school, you might be having a bad day, and Mr. Harrington's always there to encourage us. The Good way to start your day. Exactly. Huh? With a positive. Um, Tori, would you like to add anything to that as well? Or? I 100% agree with what Brandon said. They're, they're so supportive. They're there for you. They, they truly have a presence in the, in the school. Um, I don't know, for most schools, I know that they're kind of tucked away in their offices, but they make their presence known, and they're, they really care about our days and how we're doing and what's going on in our lives. And they're once again, they're so supportive, and I know my time at Brush High School would be di like would be completely different if I didn't have them in my life. Good. Parker, any experiences that you'd like to share as well? Oh yeah, going back to what Brandon said, Mr. Harrington is fantastic. I see him in the hallway every day, give him a nice handshake, shake his hand, mm -hmm. ask him how he's doing. It's it's, right. it's a really nice thing to do with a principal. He really wants you to do well. It's it's a really nice support system that we have here with all the administrators. 
It's important to be visible. It sounds yeah. like he is. And that's some of the best conversations you have is being out in the halls with the kids and, and kind of like that downtime. And so it's, it's good to hear that they've been supportive. Now the next one, I don't know if we'll have enough time today to talk about all the co-curricular things we have <laughs> because I can tell you in the two years I've been here, everywhere I look I've seen you on the field and mm -hmm. plays and everything. But I, I, I guess I'd like to um, maybe for you to share a little bit of some of the uh, co-curricular activities that you've taken. We know it's important that the classroom the academics are important, but uh, also developing the well-rounded student is, is equally important. Um, so, so Parker, I'm going to talk to you. I mean, two years here, so what are some of the things that you've been involved in? I've been involved in Care Club, uh, Cultural Awareness, Race, and Equality. That, that group has actually made me grow a lot as a person. It's made me see a different perspective on the world. Although I haven't been able to participate as, in it as much as I would like to due to sports and other activities, it, it's, it's the thought-provoking thought, the thought -provoking things that they talk about that really, that really strikes me. It's really made me grow a lot as a person. And also the sports that I've been involved in, swimming and baseball. Um, so, sw it, so swimming, what, what events do you uh, swim? Uh, mainly brushstroke. Okay. I'm, I'm not very good at swimming, but, <laughs> but you, you know, enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoy it. It's the coaches are wonderful. The, the team atmosphere is definitely one of the best I've ever been around. And I've I've done a lot of sports in my time. And they've been quite successful lately too. I think they've won a couple oh, conference yeah. championships as well. So yeah, it's yeah. It, it all honestly goes a lot to the coaching. Mr. Mr. Spicer and Coach V are really fantastic, and so they do a great job uh, teaching everybody and just being really hands-on, it's really fantastic. They have a lot of energy as well, I've oh, seen yeah. it. Oh, uh, yeah. so, so baseball, what position do you play in baseball? Um, I'm known as the jackknife. <laughs> I kind of just play everywhere. Okay. Um, this past weekend, I just played catcher. And Great. Yeah, it's fantastic. You need one of those utility players yeah. that can just pick up everywhere. When, you're, when you play everything, it means you never get a, never get time off, and that's mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. That's it's all great. about learning everywhere. That's great. Tori, how about you? What have you I know you mentioned band, but what, what, what other things have you done as well? Um, I've, I've tried to become as involved as, involved as possible throughout my years here. Um, I've been involved in band, like I said earlier, uh, National Honor Society, Key Club, uh, and the one that really, and, and sports as well, but the one that really impacted me uh, was Aspirations and is Aspirations. I'm heavily involved with it. It's in, we're an organization that works uh, cohesively with staff, advisors, I mean administrators, the staff, so as far as teachers and then students, to make the school a positive place through the student voice. Um, we surveyed the students at the beginning of these past two years and got their input on a lot of things going on in the school district. Um, and we found out what what should be improved the most based on the statistics. And this year we're running a spirit week, actually this week, um, to improve the school spirit uh, because that was something that the students found to be lacking. So I, or I was uh, heavily involved with Spirit Week as far as making the ballots and making posters and emailing the students as, what, as to what's happening this week. And I think it's, it's benefiting our school a lot and it's awesome to see that even as a small group of people we can have such a large impact on the district. Great, I'm going to have to stop by. I know we talked about that last year when we, when, as part of Aspirations and really listening to students and having that voice. And that was one of the things that the students felt that they wanted to be able to show their pride. Um, you know, they felt that people felt that pride was lacking, but I remember one of the students saying that, well, we don't have an opportunity to show it. So it sounds like a, uh, that you're on the right track to be able to do that. So Yeah, we're trying. <laughs> sounds good. Brandon, I know recently I just saw the play The Music Man. I, I saw you in that, but uh, tell us a little about your co-curricular activities. Honestly, it would be easier for me to tell you things that I haven't been involved <laughs> in. Yeah, so we'll, we'll start with a few of them. <laughs> okay. Well, first and foremost, um, since Parker already mentioned it, CARE, it really means a lot to me that he even mentioned that, like, and how much of an impact it is being the co-founder of that organization. And I love CARE. It's something that is really important to me, just promoting racial harmony in my um, high school. And... I'm glad and I really hope that the legacy will be passed. I mean, Parker, you have two more years here, so oh, yeah. I'm expecting a lot out of you. <laughs> and um, We'll write your report. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm currently the president of Student Congress, and my year is coming almost to a close. Um, I'll be ending it with the senior send-off ceremony next week, actually. And that's going to be hard and difficult because we all have to deliver speeches and everything. But Student Congress is that's an organization that is really important to me. Just and it's really honorable to be know that I'm the president of the Student Congress organization. And people always come up to me and say, Mr. President, hello, how are you? You look really <laughs> nice today, Mr. President. I don't know. It's just. <laughs> don't even do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> being the president has been the best year of my life. 
So, Great. And, and you're in the band as well. I'm also in the band. So, so what instrument do you play? I play the sousaphone and the marching band and then the tuba. I mean, it's the same instrument, but... Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we've, we've talked about um, co-curricular activities. We've talked about academics in the classroom. And um, what are some of the skills that you've learned by participating in CARE, uh, participate in aspirations, baseball, uh, the play? I mean, what type of skills uh, have you acquired that you think will serve you well as you go on to the next part of your life? And um, I'll hop around, but, but Tori, I'm going to start with you again. So uh, Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think there's a couple main things that the school has taught me through being so involved and taking a rigorous, rigorous course load would be time management is my number one. I learned to... I learned the hard way. I was I was not very balanced my freshman and sophomore or at the beginning of my freshman and sophomore year, um, but now I I'm able to uh, schedule out my time and balance my time effectively so that I can do I can do my schoolwork. I can do the extracurriculars that I have in the school. Be involved in my youth group and involved in the community. So the time management that I learned here will probably affect the rest of my life, knowing that I can now effectively schedule my life out. <laughs> Um, and then a very important skill. Very. Yeah. And then I think as well as being able to, to walk up to a student that I don't know and have a conversation. We do have a very large school, so I walk around the halls not knowing some people. Like every day I'll see a new student that I had never seen before, but maybe have gone here their entire lives just like me. Um, so the, having the ability to, to join a club and meet new people and be able to walk up to them and say, hi, how's it going, and have a conversation. Um, is, is incredible and it's a life school skill once again that I'll be able to utilize the rest of my life. Sounds like you build some confidence as well. That, yes, that's ma important. Uh, Brandon, what are some of the skills that you've learned that, you, that you'll take on to the next part of your life that, that will be helpful? Um, well, first and foremost, I agree with Tori completely on time management. Uh, just having a balance in life, you know, you have so many opportunities, you know, um, different things to do. Um, Well, a little bit about you've done some leadership, you know. And yes. You talked about being the president of of um, student congress and that. So how how will that those what have you had to uh, skills to acquire to in order to leave an organization like that? Perfect. Um, well, that's just being responsible. Um, yeah. Mr. Laplanche keeps me on task and keeps me on track of every single one of my deadlines. Um, there's things so much to do with like homecoming, picking the decorations, picking the theme, ordering the decorations, organizing people to come to the decorations, to put the decorations together. You know, it's not easy to be the leader of an organization because there's... Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> because people are always asking you questions and sometimes you may not know the answers to the questions and so you have to do the research because you're the person in charge to find the answers to their questions. And so be, being the leader of um, multiple organizations has taught me that you must be responsible and it's important to be able to manage your time and sometimes you have to have time for yourself just so you can have a peace of mind that's important as well. Well I, I think you both mentioned exactly balance because a lot of times if you put too much energy in one area that something else will suffer and I think that's really good advice to make sure that you're you know you're balancing everything out and you're right as a leader you know you may not always have all the answers but you have to be resourceful to know where to go mm -hmm. to get the answers and so that's a great great opportunity uh, uh, for you to learn um, in your next uh, in the next part right. of your life. And honestly though, I would say also it's important, sometimes you have to learn how to be able to say no. And it's, <laughs> it's really difficult to say no when you're such a nice person and want to help everyone. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have responsibilities and if they like, if they line up with each other and they, you know. It could become overwhelming. It could become overwhelming. Yeah. So you have to watch out for yourself. You don't want to become over exhausted either. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Parker, what, what would you say? What type of skills have you learned in, in, in participating in all these uh, co-curricular activities? Um, People skills, yeah. lots and lots very, of very people important. skills. Um, being able to communicate with anybody who who decides to, you know, come into my life. I mean, that's that's a huge factor. I mean, Rush is so diverse that it it, it makes it hard to stay so isolated. So one of the things that Brush forces you to do is to talk to people of everywhere. I mean, you have to talk that's to people point. from each group, and it's it's fantastic. I mean, it, it really makes you grow as a person. And um, back to what they were saying about time management. Time mm -hmm. management Number one, is huh? the, the absolute biggest thing yeah. in, in life. I think, I mean, even for adults, I mean, mature adults, I mean, just making sure that you, you balance out your day and what, what great way to start is, you know, here at, at high school. Um, 
I'm going to move on to another uh, subject. We're going to talk about um, the, the rebranding uh, that's been going on uh, here. One of the things when I was hired in um, less than two years ago was is uh, there were a lot of questions that were being asked to me. First of all, people were asking me, was I going to change the school colors, um, that they didn't understand what an arc was, and uh, they wanted me to change things. So what I did was really, I mean, I listened, and that was the uh, first thing. There was, uh, uh, felt that there was a lack of school pride, or people didn't understand the pride that was really happening here. So one of the things that we embarked on was really kind of rebranding a little bit, is, is making, um, I, I guess the the colors cool again, and really understanding what that was. Now realizing that I have two seniors here may have been a little odd to begin with. So I don't know whether um, maybe talk a little about um, uh, you know the momentum has really picked up, but maybe a little talk about your feelings of of some of the rebranding that's been going on. So uh, maybe we'll start with uh, you know, Tori. You want to start? Sure. Um, the the rebranding I think it's brought a new light to our district. It, it's brightened us up a little bit, and it's exciting to see what what it, it has changed. Uh, it, it has been a little weird being a senior to see things change, like our logo has changed from the B to the A to make our school unified across the middle schools to the, I mean the high school all the way down to the elementary school. And that was weird being a senior to see something that sure. was so recognizable to change to something completely different. Um, but we still have the B in the bottom of the ground at the in the gymnasium, so it's still there. <laughs> it hasn't, it We're hasn't preserving disappeared that. Com completely, so it's cool. Um, <laughs> But I think brightening up our colors a little bit and giving it a new light, uh, although and, and as well as uh, adding all that uh, extra ban all the extra banners into the uh, stadium when we go out on the field for marching band and we we see the brand new turf field and all the posters. It's it's exciting to see people point out point them out and be excited about the, our our arc pride and Great. our brush pride. Great. Thank you. Anybody else want to add to the Brandon? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I the rebranding is a little bittersweet, just on the terms that, you know, the Archie mural was all gone. But, I mean, I definitely think the brand rebranding, as Toria said, has definitely brightened up the school of spirit. When I think of school of spirit, my mind goes straight to football. Mm -hmm. Football season is one of the biggest um, contributors of school of spirit. Oh, yeah. Um, there's so many people there. You have the parents, community. Member, community, staff, teachers, everyone is there at the football game and we're all united and it was also really cool that the band got to sit in the, um, the stands a couple of times because that made us feel like right with the game. It was game. right there, wasn't it? It was yeah. exhilarating. Yeah. Um, I love that. Um, but it's, it was, it's just really cool to see how colors, I guess, sure. can change the way that people perceive things. Well, one of the things you're talking about, the arcs, uh, what we want to do is, is when you go to Sunview, um, it's really exciting to see that they're, they're little arcs, and then they want to be very excited when they go to the football games and, and, and be uh, an arc and have that arc pride. And that was something that was missing before because we had Mustangs and we had different things, mm -hmm. uh, different other kind of mascots. So that was one thing that we're starting to see uh, at the lower uh, levels that they're going to be excited to come up and be a brush arc. You know, Parker, you got a couple more years ago. Anything that you're thinking? I mean, we still have some input as we rebrand ourselves, but any thoughts on, on the initial stages of the rebranding? I, I think it's fantastic. I, I think it's really great that we're trying to really unite the community versus just having individual groups within the community. Um, we're really, it's really great to see that we're reuniting SEL to great. make it just come to brush. I mean, it, it's really great to see. I think we're doing a really great thing here. Great. Well, we look to uh, more advice in the next couple of years from you as well. Of course. Um, one of the things we, we'll, we'll, we'll do a, a, a quick um, memory down memory lane here. So remember, I know some of you have mentioned you've been to Adrian and Sunview, and, and I know you started out at Greenview. Um, who would like to share uh, a, you know, Parker, we'll start with you, maybe a favorite memory that you had, and it doesn't have to be just at Brush. You have a favorite memory. And if, and if I'm looking at Brandon, are you ready to start? <laughs> no, or? I'm not ready. I think we should start with Parker. <laughs> Anything. It could be, is it, uh, is it uh, the playground on, on Adrian or, or, or a teacher or, or anything that you can, um, a favorite memory that you've had? You know, a favorite memory that I had was probably at Memorial. Um, Memorial was a very social time for me. You know, I, I didn't do that great in school. I, I was not the brightest in school at the time. I decided to spend more time on the social life. Uh, and, as, you know, as many junior high students do. Yes, and um, now, now I've, I've learned my lesson, but... Back then, I was very into the social aspect of things, and so I'd goof off in school and have a lot of fun. 
And um, one day, one of my teachers just decided to uh, to just call me out, and it, it was it was a really great experience because I really looked up to the guy, mm -hmm. and uh, it's definitely a really great memory for me because you know it's he a little did, bit of a life changer. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> bit of a life changer. Uh, it was actually my swim coach, Mr. Spicer. He actually said something to me in the middle of class, called me out. You know, it really it really changed a lot of things for me, That's especially great. for me since I looked up to him. He really mm -hmm. he really changed a few things for me. Very interesting. Very good. Yeah. Any other, anything that you'd like to share? And if, if not, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to our, our giving advice to upcoming students. So any special memory that you have uh, in your early days? I think uh, one of my special memories, to bring it way back to elementary school, um, when we were, I, it was either first or second grade, we did a pumpkin carving for Halloween and we got to work with the older kids to carve our pumpkin. <laughs> we were each paired up with an older kid. Um, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world to be with this old kid carving my pumpkin, who was probably in like the fifth or sixth grade, I don't know. But I was like, this, cool, this kid is the coolest person I've ever met. So we carved my pumpkin, it turned out awesome. And then when I became that older kid that went to go carve someone's pumpkin, I was like, I don't know what to do, I have no artistic talent. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know how to change this kid's life at all. But then I got there and we made an awesome pumpkin and I was like, Wow, I'm that older kid that this this sure. kid's gonna look up to now. So it was That's it was great. cool to see the transformation. That's great. Before we move on to our last question, Brandon, anything you want to share? I would say my favorite um, memory, going back down memory lane, my favorite memory would be this um, homecoming weekend <laughs> um, because I put all this preparation into being, uh, you know, as a president of student congress, I put all this preparation into it, and then at the end of the ceremony, at the end of the ceremony, they announce um, the winners of the court and then they go to king and queen and then they start reading all the bios and then the bio that they read was mine and they announced that I was king. So that was something that was really exhilarating for me because like, I mean people told me that I was going to be, they thought I would be king, but you know, it's not something that you can just expect, get your hopes up for. It's still something that, you know, I don't know what's going to happen and whatever happens, happens, you know. Yeah. So that was really a fun weekend. The, the football game was fun, the dance was fun, the assembly was fun. It was just an awesome weekend and homecoming was great, 2013. Sounds like it was a good memory. Definitely. So now we're going to switch on to uh, one more question. I, I recently had lunch with eighth graders at Memorial and um, the next time I go have lunch with them, if you could offer them one bit of advice as they make their way into Brush High School next year, what type of advice would you offer them to prepare them for high school life? So, it wasn't too long ago for you, yeah. Parker. So, you, what would you offer uh, a current eighth grader? What would be a great, um, you know, advice? And you might have even mentioned it earlier, but how would you capture that? Um, definitely going to the social aspect. You know, if if you do what you got to do in Memorial, you pay attention to it the best you can. You're definitely going to be able to be successful in the educational aspect of Brush. But for the social aspect, I think you have to understand that. You know, friends aren't going to be your friends in high school, and you have to understand that in order to be successful, you have to drop some friends, and you have to move on and try and do better things for yourself and surround yourself with people who also have the same goals as you do. You know, that, that was a really big thing for me. That was a really big step that I had to make when I came up to Brush, and, I mean, it, it's really made a really big difference in my life going from, you know, being all about the social life in middle school to being... You know, a really successful student now. And make sure that you balance your social life with your academics. Yeah, there, there's definitely a fine balance. Sure. It, you have to you have to understand what each thing takes and what it has to take out of you. Okay. And um, you shouldn't put anything into a relationship that you that you aren't going to get back. So good. good. Uh, Brandon, any advice that you would give a, a current eighth grader getting ready to come into Brush High School this fall? I would just say try as hard as possible to stay away from the drama. <laughs> because if you get involved with the drama, there's there's nothing down that road but trouble. Um, you know, so many people c try to hang out with the wrong crowd to impress others, and they don't really worry, they don't really think about their academics or um, having relationships with teachers or that type of thing. But I honestly, when it comes to high school, that's the most important part because, you know, high school sets up everything else in life, college and a career. Or if some people don't go to college, high school is still that foundation where everybody starts off, whether it's going to the military or going to technical or vocational schooling. It, I, I don't understand um, how people can just you know, throw it all out and not really care about their education because education is one of the most important things to me. And I mean, sure. you should never take it for granted. Great. 
Tori, what kind of advice would you offer? I think it would be to do it. Do everything, <laughs> get involved, do extracurriculars, do uh, hard classes, take, take risks as far as how much you want to get involved, but know that there's a limit into how much you can do in a, in a day. So, I mean, start off with a lot of things and then figure out what you think is most important to you and then cut back. Uh, to do the things that you think are the most important, um, it, d do it, get involved, right. have fun. You know, and I agree. You know, that was one of the things of being involved. You, you have an opportunity to um, um, make friends, uh, feel a sense of belonging, at, at, and at the same time, you know, maybe develop a good support system that yeah. that they will help support each other and not be distractors, but uh, supporters of each other. So, all good, sound advice. So the next time I have lunch with them, I'll have to pass that along. Um, well, I must say this is at the end of our show, and I want to thank Tori, Brandon, and Parker for coming. It's it's fantastic. Um, you've all made me feel welcome in the year and a half that I've been here, and it's just been outstanding. So thank you for coming. It's our thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I must say that of all the television broadcasts that I've done over the last two years, this one ranks up as one of my favorites. I want to thank all of you for being here and congratulate you on the success that you've experienced as Brush Arts. You are model students and should be commended for your work. I wish you all the best in the future. And for our viewers at home, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm Linda Reed, Superintendent.